you know, you're you're grabbing the wheel and you're holding on tight for dear life because it's and you're just every you know it's it's a um, it's a grind. Hi everyone, welcome back to my next video. Today we are still remote, as you can see. We're it's uh, late 2020 and, and uh, working remote doing remote interviews and teaching is still a very handy thing. And we're very, very fortunate today to have uh, Lavelle and Paris from Novel Culture, the Novel Culture YouTube channel. Thank you guys for being here. Thank, Thank you very you. much, Bob. <laughs> much appreciated. Thank you. And uh, you are in a, you're just switching into a, a sprinter van, I know. And so mm -hmm. you're going to be doing a build on that. So, uh, people can follow along on your YouTube channel as you build out a sprinter. Uh, tell mm -hmm. us a little bit about that. Uh, we bought a 2012 uh, Freightliner Sprinter, 170 extended, and um, we are building it next month, which will be January. And we're going to be vlogging it, daily vlogging it. Yeah, day. daily vlogging it. Uh, but for today's <laughs> video, we're talking about stealth parking because you guys have been stealth parking for the last three years. And where have you been camping at? Mainly in downtown areas and cities. Um, mm -hmm. uh, being full-time students in San Francisco, it's a small place and uh, we don't have room to be doing a lot of commuting when it comes to going to school every single day of the week. Wow, that must be one of the tougher places. I would guess that's pretty tough to still park there. It is pretty yeah, stuff. We've gotten our van towed. We've gotten plenty of tickets. Our first year in San Francisco, we got over a thousand dollars of tickets. Wow. The signs are so confusing. Mm -hmm. But yeah. <laughs> but we've mastered it over the last two years. So I, yes, it's gotten yeah. better. So a new person's out there listening and they need to uh they have to stay in a city and work or be in your family or whatever it is. Um now, what is your advice to them? How can they stealth park and stay as safe as possible? I would say um, look in areas where the houses look nicer. Um, you don't see too many build up like um, um, places with busted windows. And make sure you really look at the concrete because the concrete will tell you a lot of things. Because if you have a lot of glass on the ground, a lot of trash, that's more than likely not a really good area to park in because there's going to be vandalizing of vehicles. Another thing to pay attention to is, um, like she was saying, glass and um, glass and trash. trash is the people in the area. Um, we as humans have developed, which has been a good thing and bad thing in society, but has developed a kind of spidey sense of a bad situation. And in big cities, urban cities, if and this is this really applies to urban experience because that's that's our experience. It's it's the people. How do you feel when you're there? Would you go to sleep there? You mm -hmm. know, what is your body telling you? you? You really have to understand that you are living in a vehicle and that van life is is cool and it's great, but you still have to pay attention to your your surroundings and really not be. Um, paranoid or not be uh, too um, high strung, but doing your due diligence when you look at your surroundings. So, uh, I, and I agree hundred percent following, learning to uh, listen to your intuition, follow your gut. That's a, your top priority. Any, any ideas of how over a period of time you developed that or in, can you boil that down to help someone else how to, 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 to develop the your gut feeling yeah and it it really is it's okay during the day because we're mm -hmm. paying attention um we are you know we are we, we feel like we're responsible van life is know how to take care of ourselves but at night when it's a long day of work or at a time where you might not be able to find parking very easily you might put yourself in a situation that you would normally during the day or in a time of convenience, you didn't, you know, you wouldn't have chose to do that. And then boom, you know, your window is busted or somebody tries to break in while you're in there. Some of these situations that we've had, we could have avoided by knowing, you know, I guess being, becoming seasoned, 
you know, it's, you get hurt so many times, we don't do that anymore. And that, you know, setting policies, how, what's plan A, what's plan B, what's plan C. So uh, one way I like to think of it is that your intuition is that still small voice in uh, that comes up from inside of you, the probably deep, really technically deep from inside your brain, some unconscious part of the brain. But if so, what you're saying is if you come home, it's easy to be tired and not paying attention and not listen to that voice. So to pay attention and specifically try to train yourself to hear the voice, be alert, look around, what am I seeing, and allow the voice to speak. Mm -hmm. Yep. The, the human. <clears throat> Putting words in your mouth, but that's kind of how I think about it. Yeah, that's spot on. You know, we are, we're creatures, and we're, you know, living, they call it the concrete jungle. You 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 know, we're not robots. You know, we are, everything has been trained in us over a period of time, mm -hmm. you know, and we, we learn from person uh, before us and so on and so forth so do you mostly park residential or are you in the commercial areas do you do you have a preference there any advice about which is better yeah we're mainly in residential areas uh we don't go to the industrial areas because they're more than likely they're going to be a little far uh, really far way out because we have to leave our vehicle um where we're going to have it for the day because parking is really terrible in San Francisco. So we try to leave it in free spots and then we have to scooter in with our scooters. Are your, your scooters are electric? Yeah. Amazing. How, and how are you charging them? We must have solar. Uh, yeah. The van has uh, 200 Watts of uh, the, the flexible solar panels on a Nissan. And uh, we have, um, it's, I think it's 150 amp, uh, um, battery uh, isolator that, and 300 watt AGM batteries. But mainly we would bring the charger with us and charge it once we get to the school or wherever we are. That was really important because our system is not going to charge two huge batteries at night, you know, and make it through to the next day. How long would you park at one place? Would you move every 24 hours? <sighs> Yeah, we usually move right at, we, so we'll come in at night and we'll probably stay the whole entire day because we probably leave our vehicle nearby in that area and then we just move our car again at night. Yeah, because people in houses, they're going to recognize in your vehicle. Um, they're going to notice it and they will become to know the vehicle and maybe the people who come in and out of the vehicle. Um, so we, we would come in at night right after school um, to our place that we chose to park to the night before, uh, put our scooters in, get in, and depending on what our feeling about this area was, this spidey sense, we would either move or we would stay. You know, we just you know maybe we'll do two days or three days at one location. Not at that very specific spot. Not at that not same, same spot, spot but, but in that area down the street or across the street or maybe on the block. Uh, and then we might move to a completely different neighborhood the next night. Okay. What other advice do you have for uh, for someone in stealth parking? I would say keep the noise down. Because uh, as soon as someone knows that you're in the vehicle, you can kind of... We've looked out the window and seen someone looking at us inside of the vehicle. So it's just we have to remember to keep the music down, keep our voices down and keep the laughing to a minimum because we've gotten the cops called on us because I was in the back of the van laughing really, really hard. <laughs> so I just have to remember to keep it down. <laughs> a light is bad because then light is obvious and people will want to look in and see what's going on. But the noise, that's a very that's very good advice because. People walking by or people nearby hear noise, they wonder what's going on. It's just human nature. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. Wherever you decide to park, make sure that there are street lights somewhere. Because if your car, if our van is in the dark, our van is more than likely going to get broken, broken into. Oh, and, and another tip we will say is make sure that you don't park in someone's parking space. Yeah. Because... One time we were parked in someone's parking space and we came back and our tires was both side of our tire, both um, driver side tires 
was on flat because we parked in someone's parking space that my brother didn't know we were parking in someone's parking space. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so it could look like an open, innocent spot, but somebody could be coming back late for work and maybe they left their spot open. It was real late when we got there. Mm -hmm. And first thing in the morning, we went out to check and there was two holes, two holes in each tire. And those were $300 tires a piece. So it put a wrench in our travel plans and we were stranded in that area mm -hmm. just because we said, okay, we let our guards down. We, we asked, we said, are you sure this is a good spot? It is only your responsibility to make sure your car is good. So we kind of let the guard down, gave the responsibility to someone else and, you know, uh, we got our tires slashed. So really um, the bigger advice there is be very careful not to annoy anyone around because if you annoy them, that that's going to roll back on you bad. <laughs> so anything you can do not to draw attention to yourself, mm -hmm. um, not to uh, not to annoy someone. Someone came home, you're parked in that spot. They were annoyed and they were so angry enough to slash your tires. So really, you know, what you're talking about is being alert and aware of your surroundings all the time. You come home from school tired one day you you know and you, you relax and you let down your guard is that difficult is does that grind on you that that vigilance and awareness i mean i think life grinds on you in general <laughs> and you know just being a human that's every what we'll be doing until you know the end so uh it's it's all about where your mind is about it because if you know if you choose, consciously choose this lifestyle, then you're choosing the good and the bad, the whole uh, shebang, whether whether you are in one of those expensive vans or you're in a, a compact SUV or something like that. It's going to teach you lessons. You're going to learn from it, and it may be a rougher ride than the normal, you know, go get a house ride. Well, one way that I think about... Um stealth parking is like a defensive driving when you first start driving you know when you've just taken your courses you just got your license you know you're you're grabbing the wheel and you're holding on tight for dear life because it's and you're just every you know it's it's a um, it's a grind just driving getting in you know every left turn against heavy traffic is is pure misery it still is but it's real misery in the beginning and after a while you just uh internalize the scanning, the seeing, the judgment, and you can, it's like defensive driving. After a while, you can be a very, very safe defensive driver, and it's not grinding at all, just because you've learned, you've observed, you've taken things in, you've made them unconscious, automatic. And like you said, sometimes you have to, you know, stop being unconscious. You come into a dangerous intersection when you're driving down the freeway. So, um, and I know this has happened to you a lot of times. You're, you've been careful. You've done everything you can. And in the middle of the night or sometime, you get a knock on the door and there's a police officer. Do you have any advice for how people should handle the knock on the door? You know, we've gotten the knock one time. And we really? knew we knew we were negligent when we parked there. We just mm -hmm. didn't care. We just said, <laughs> we're parked near, we're sleeping here, we don't care, and we're not answering the night. And they knocked for a long time. We did not answer. But we did move that morning and took off. But every time we've had an interaction with the police, uh, we were not sleeping. Uh, we were conducting our day as normal. Um, either morning routine, nighttime routine, laundry routine, we were just doing it. And uh, we were then contacted by the police at that period. So uh, in terms of getting the knock and then responding, uh, we can only refer you to, you know, um, you can't really control the perspective or the perception of somebody else. Um, but what you can do is understand the messages that you send on a general scale, on a general scale, and then also take that into account when calmly um, and you know 
patiently interacting with police. Um, you are in a vehicle and they could kick you out of that vehicle. You know, they could turn that smile upside down on your day. Mm-hmm. You know, so you want to, you know, just depends. I guess you have to have a story too. You gotta have a story. You could be minding your own business. And you can you can tell them I'm minding my own business, but Mm-mm. that might not, you know, fare well. And also be truthful as much as you can uh, to where it's not incriminating because they will toss you into a, now you're a criminal and investigating you and now I'm looking for something. I'm, I'm searching for something. I know it's going to sound simple, but I would say read signs. Every street sign, every sign on the street, I would say read it within that block that you're going to be parking on because there are signs that says street sweepers on one side of the street and not the other side of the street. So you might think you're good on, you know, you might think you're good on one side of the street and not good on the other side of the street. Um, and the signs may be further away from where you're going to actually park, but it says it's going to do the whole entire street. So it's just watch yeah, signs. Okay. That's all really good advice. Thank you so much. So uh, I really appreciate your sharing all that with us. That's uh, really, really good stuff. Uh, so folks go and check out their uh their youtube channel novel culture and i think you will really get a lot out of it Uh, if you're young or a student or stealth parking or building a sprinter van or living in a uh a a nissan good stuff there so folks thank you so much for watching this video if you got anything out of it like us on youtube subscribe to the channel hit that thumbs up button and we'll talk to you later thanks guys i really appreciate it Thank thank you. It was a pleasure.